Well, welcome to Redeemer Church Online. We're so glad to be with you this morning, especially if you're visiting us from Encinitas, around the globe, um, wherever you are, especially for the kids out there who are with us for family worship today. We're so grateful to be with you and to celebrate this special day together. My name is Peter Nelson. I'm one of the pastors here. And for all of us at Redeemer, we wanna wish you a very happy Easter. We're so grateful on this special day to celebrate with you. Years ago, uh, my oldest son, Riley, uh, came to us on Easter and my wife and I were having a conversation with him and asked him, what is it about Easter that makes it so special? What happened on that day? And he looked at us after thinking a while and he said, well, it was the day that Jesus rose from the bed. And we looked at each other and we're like, rose from the bed? You mean rose from the dead, right? And he thought about it and he said, well, why didn't he rise from the bed? Interesting question, but just getting out of bed, though maybe an accomplishment, maybe even today, did not change the course of human history. Easter did. Pastor Warren Wiersbe once said, Easter is the truth that turns the church from a museum into a ministry. Or in other words, today we don't just celebrate a historical event but we're celebrating and embracing a person that is right here with us, that's living and active in Jesus Christ. And because of Easter, there's not a moment in which we are without hope. In fact, the resurrection of Jesus guarantees that Jesus is who he says he is. And the promises of scripture, both today and through eternity are absolutely true. So with that in mind, let's celebrate Easter together with a call to worship from Isaiah 25, six through nine. And this is what it says. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain, the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Let's take a moment to pray together. God, we thank you for the gift of Easter, that it is our true North that we can hang on to regardless of what trials and tribulations come our way. The truth that you, Jesus, have overcome sin and death so that we may be redeemed that we may be made new, that we can be in a relationship with you, the God of the universe. Thank you that Easter always points us to everlasting hope that never fades or diminishes, but is found in the promises set forth from what you've accomplished on our behalf. On this day, you have truly left the tomb and we see your fingerprints throughout our lives and all of creation. We love you, Jesus. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.
again, happy Easter to all of you. And we miss you so much. We wish we could be with you. Uh, And we recognize that this is a unique Easter for all of us. But our hope for you is that you're able to take some time that God will provide you with some time to slow down a little bit and really ponder the implications of what Christ rising from the dead actually means for you and your life. Now, We realize in the season of distancing that there's some of us that are really lacking connection. And for the extroverts out there, you realize this on day one. Uh, And for some of the introverts, uh, maybe you're starting to feel it now and wherever you are on that spectrum, we wanna let you know that here at Redeemer, we really wanna create opportunities for you to connect. So we're doing an intentional job of trying to boost our social media presence. And that's seen through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, And we recognize that there's no format that's perfect. But again, we want to create a space to be able to do that with you. Next, if you are new to Redeemer, uh, we want to invite you to our virtual welcome lunch. Now, obviously, this will be a BYOL, bring your own lunch, because the logistics of trying to feed all of you would be a little bit complicated. But we want to create a space, again, for us to gather. And if you're new to Redeemer, we're going to create a, a virtual opportunity to get to know us as a church and get to know some of the staff as well. And so I want to invite you, as that's a great entry point into Redeemer. And if you're looking for ways and information to, to, to sign up and the details there, it's going to be on Redeemer sd.org, our website. And as always, while you're there, uh, make sure you sign up for our e-news for all Redeemer communication. Finally, as we continue to emphasize this importance of connection and community, we wanted to share a story with you about the church in action and how God is using his people and what community can look like in this season.
Well, hi, Redeemer family. Uh, this is Bob Klein. I'm the pastor of Young Adults, and I'm with Herman and Louise, members here at Redeemer, and one of our community group leaders. They lead a community group of young adults. And you guys have been through a real tough situation the last month or so. You know, tell us about what's been happening. Three weeks ago, I went in to get an angiogram because they thought I might have some blockage in my arteries. And at the, at the end, the doctor told us that I needed to have surgery, to have heart bypass surgery. And the surgeon actually talked to me, us the next day and said, I wouldn't wait until May to do it. So we basically um, went from thinking it was a fairly routine type of situation to, oh my gosh, I have to have open heart surgery and I have to have it soon. Wow. So when was the surgery, Herman? Sure. The surgery was uh, two weeks ago, which is about eight days after I had my angiogram. Wow. And now, Louise, that was right when the pandemic was starting. Were you able to go in and visit and be with Herman during all of this? No, that is actually uh, the hardest part for for us, for me and the girls. And Mm. also for Herman, um, I just couldn't imagine how he would feel when he's all there by himself going through this huge surgery and, and even the recovery in the ICU. And that was um, definitely not usual. And there was no other way because nobody can go in to visit at all and not even family, his mom. And so that was the toughest for us. Wow. So, well, so how did you experience God comforting you and meeting you when you couldn't be physically together? And as Herman was going through the surgery? Well, first of all, um, we are so blessed, so blessed to have the community and our young adult groups has done amazingly to support us and loving us. And uh, we really feel God's, you know, through people that were, you know, really supporting us in the whole journey. And they set up prayers for every hour and it's not just them and even members on in, in Redeemer church, we've got so many text messages, so many um, email messages um, reaching out to help us. Right. So there were, was, uh, the young adults made videos for me. Yeah. You know, they kept texting me. I asked them to just keep texting me and stuff because I, I wanted to feel, um, you know, not feel, alone. You know, not alone. Hi, Herman. Hey, Herman. Hi, Herman. Hi, Herman. Hey, Herman. Hi, Herman. Hey, Herman. Love you, man. I really do look up to you. I'm really happy to have you as part of our community. Um, I'm praying for you. And I just wanted to thank you for all you've done for me. We heard that your surgery went well today. So we're going to sing for you now. And you can join along too in the, in the bed if you want. <laughs> I just wanted to share a quick verse. God's got your back. We've got your back. I, myself, and a bunch of other people in our community group are praying for you right now. So it was very overwhelming, the, the number of, the amount of support, love, and prayers that we were getting through this whole process. We totally feel God's presence. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. You know, Jesus said, uh, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And it sounds like you guys have loved people so well, and you've seen them really meet you at, at this time. So that's fantastic. Can I just pray for you guys real quick? Sure. Yes. Father, thank you so much that you have uh, uh, seen Herman through this trial, Herman and Louise and their their daughters, and that by your wounds, we are healed. We see see him on the other side of this surgery uh, in recovery and, and, and looking like his old self, looking like a new self. So we thank you for this. Thanks for this time of sharing. Amen. Amen. The importance of community. Thank you so much, Bob, Herman, and Louise for sharing. And as a church, let's continue to be a community that cares and prays, loves, and supports one another. I want to welcome you to our Easter service. I don't know where this tradition comes from, but on this special day, when someone says he is risen, the response is he is risen indeed. So can we try that? I know I'm going to say it and Although you can hear me, I know that I'm not going to be able to hear you, but I'm going to trust that you're going to respond. So here we go. 
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Even though we're not able to worship and gather together physically, even though the church building is empty, the tomb was empty too. And friends, that makes all the difference in the world. For today's Easter message, we're going to be looking at a passage where the risen Lord Jesus engages the disciples. And he says this phrase to them, which is so important. He says, peace be with you. And he says it two times to emphasize it. Peace be with you. My hope and prayer is that from today's message, you would experience that peace. So let me read from the gospel of John chapter 20, verses 19 to 22. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. This is God's word. Jesus says, peace be with you. Three things for us to look at. Number one, the setting in which he says this. Number two, the meaning of what he says. And number three, the result of what he says. So first of all, the setting in which he says this. We're told here from the reading that it was the first day of the week. It was the first day of the week. Jesus has been raised from the dead and that the disciples were hiding with a locked door for fear of the Jews. This isn't talking about anti-Semitism. Remember that John was Jewish and all the disciples were too. This is talking about the group of people who persecuted and killed Jesus. And the disciples were afraid because they were being implicated. And what struck me here is that it says it was evening time. I don't know about you, but I'm often impacted by the weather and lighting here in San Diego this week. It's been raining and cold and windy And being in the home and just all that weather there, it's felt really heavy. Well, here, imagine it's evening time. It's dark. There's no electricity. They're hiding in fear that their lives are in danger. And any footstep or sound would cause them to be so afraid. And as I was reading this passage, I couldn't help but notice the parallel context. The disciples here are essentially, they're essentially self-quarantining themselves. They're in an enclosed space and they're afraid of going out because outside there's threat, there's danger, there's suffering. And for us, wherever you might be, many of us are quarantined and we don't want to spread the coronavirus around, but there's also a sense of being outside. There's a threat, there's a danger, there's a possible death. Just recently when my wife made a run to the grocery store and she's buying food for our family and for my parents and her parents, it was like a big deal. It's like, make sure you got everything ready, your gloves, lotion. And it's, 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 there's a sense of this is significant and serious. And that's the setting here in that particular setting, Jesus engages the disciples. Why? To comfort them, to strengthen them, to give them peace. And notice that they're not even looking for him, but he's looking for them. They're not seeking him out, but he is seeking them out. What does that mean? Friends, some of you might be listening to this because someone shared this link with you. Or perhaps for Easter, you want to listen to a message that's uplifting. And as you're listening, you don't know what to expect. But as you're listening, even here, Jesus comes to engage you. To bring home, to bring you peace, comfort, and strength. Or maybe you're listening to this in your home, in your apartment, in loneliness. And if that's the case, or maybe in the middle of the night when you can't sleep and you feel just so caught up in it all or panic attacks, wherever it might be, Jesus comes to engage you. Just one more thought here before moving on. As I was reading this, the disciples world was completely turned over. Everything was going normal for them. 
And then with Jesus' death, a catastrophic event occurs. And now everything has changed. They don't know what the future is going to be like. There's uncertainty for themselves. Will, will things ever turn back to normal? And change can be a scary thing. And uncertainty for the future can be debilitating. And all of us can relate to that. The uncertainty, the fear. And if that's where you find yourself, you have to listen to the voice of Jesus. The voice of Jesus over all the other voices you're hearing in the news, the voice of Jesus over all the other voices that's going on in your head, that's bringing you anxiety and worry. Listen to the voice of Jesus that says, peace be with you. Well, that takes us to the second point. What does that mean? The meaning of that statement. When Jesus says, peace be with you, literally peace with you, next to you, close to you, alongside you, not Social distance, six feet minimum peace over the hair, but peace right here with you. In your loneliness, peace be with you. In your fear, peace be with you. In your anxiety, peace be with you. How can you get that peace? Well, our passage tells us as soon as Jesus said, peace be with you, he showed them his hands and his side. The way to peace, you have to gaze upon Jesus' pierced hands and his torn side. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, it means that Jesus is a suffering savior. He is a savior who empathizes and understands all our suffering. In light of the coronavirus, one of the questions that, are, that I hear is, does God care? Does God care about what's happening? And why is this? Why does he allow this? And while I don't know the specific answers to the why, I can tell you the one thing that he is telling us is that he does care. That Jesus suffered and understands suffering. For myself as a pastor in this season, talking to my other friends who are pastors, there's a sense of understanding. We feel the weight. We feel the weight of people in our churches that are struggling. How to connect with people, how to develop community in this season when there's a lot of fear. And that shared experience has developed a camaraderie and understanding And so it is that with Jesus and his suffering can understand and relate to our suffering. The second thing to note is that looking at his hands and his side, that Jesus is not only a suffering savior, but he has come to put an end to all suffering. Jesus is the risen Lord who hung on the cross and now stands before them as the one who's been raised from the dead, his physical body. And this is the truth and the power behind the Christian faith, especially in this season. While I am thankful for the gift of technology, I so miss seeing many of you face to face. I so miss us gathering together to sing, to, to be together because the physical is so important. Jesus physically rose from the dead. And that is the basis of our hope and why we can have this incredible peace. I was listening to a message this past week from Tim Keller, who's a pastor, and he referenced a book by Ernest Becker called The Denial of Death. So I went to my library and found the book, dusted it off and read some of the quotes that I'd underlined when I read it in the past. Ernest Becker is an atheist and he talks about the modern culture that we're in that people deny or don't want to think about death at all. And he says, what happens is that people are tranquilizing themselves with the trivial, but the fear remains there because after death, you cease to exist. You might think, well, that's okay. But the fear is the fear of no longer having loved ones that you're going to be forgotten. And those who remember you, even after you pass away, one day they will pass away and they will be forgotten. And it's in this context, he talks about, 
and speaking into the modern culture that so many people avoid death. But here we are in a setting, friends, where it's unavoidable. And to this, Christianity speaks in and says that Jesus Christ died and he rose again from the dead and he triumphed and he defeated death once and for all. Christianity says that Jesus, when he died and rose again, he paid the debt of our sin. Imagine that if you did something wrong and a sentence is six months in jail. During those six months, you have a debt weighing over you. It's hovering over you. You cannot escape it. But as soon as those six months are done, one second after midnight, after the six months, the debt has been paid. It's no longer hanging over you. And that's what Jesus did as he went to the cross and he rose again, the debt that the weight of it has been addressed once and for all. So when you put your hope, your faith in Jesus, that becomes your reality. Jonathan Evans is a pastor. His father is Tony Evans, who's also a pastor. And several months ago, Jonathan Evans, mother Lois, Tony Evans, wife passed away from cancer after a long, hard, valiant struggle and fight. I was watching the celebration service during which Jonathan Evans gave a talk. And as he referenced the victory that's found in the resurrection, he shared how he prayed and prayed and so many people prayed that his mother would be healed and made well. And he said, in light of the victory of Jesus in the resurrection, he came to realize this, that either she will live or she will live. Either she will be healed or she will be healed. Either she will be with family or she will be with family. Either she will be well taken care of or she will be well taken care of. The power of the resurrection. And friends, that's why there is peace. The biblical word for peace is not simply the absence of worry and stress, but it's shalom. It's the full well-being of your soul. It is life at its absolute best under the gracious and redemptive hand of God. That's what Jesus is saying to you and to me. Peace be with you. Well, what does that lead to? The third and final point. What it leads to, let me just say two things. One, great joy. It says here that the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Now, my translation is not strong enough. They were glad. It's kind of a wimpy kind of translation. Rather, it should be translated overjoyed like unshakable joy, this great joy. Because earlier on in John chapter 16, Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, you're going to have great sorrow when I leave you, but that sorrow will turn into great joy and no one will be able to take that joy away from you. That's the joy that they were experiencing. Why? Well, for one thing, Jesus is now with them. You and I know that if there's a loved one who's been separated from us, who's been sick, who's been deathly ill, and if they get better, there's great joy because of that. And so they were experiencing that. But secondly, when they saw the risen Jesus, they came to realize everything that Jesus said is true. Before they heard Jesus say, I'm going to die. I'm going to be raised again. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they see Jesus and they're like, yes, all of this is true. All the promises are are yes, and that's why there's great joy. And friends, because of this reality of Easter, you and I can have this joy. This joy that is in defiance against the darkness and the gloom in which we find ourselves in. Because Christians are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. We are Easter people living in a Good Friday world, but make no mistake, even though it's a Good Friday world that we're in right now, Easter has dawned, its light is shining. And because of this, Easter joy breaks through even now, even to you today. That's the great joy. Secondly, the result of what he says is that Jesus sends 
you out with purpose and mission. We're told here, as the second time Jesus says, peace be with you, as the father sent me, even so I'm sending you. He's giving us purpose and mission. And when you read the book of Acts, you see the disciples going from isolation and quarantine and fear to this incredible movement of boldness, sharing the good news of Jesus, confronting sin, bringing hope and joy and new life to people all around them. I was reading this next part and it says that when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, and I'm a confession here. As soon as I read that he breathed on them, I was like, Ooh, we don't want anyone to be breathing on us right now, but this breathing is different. This breathing that Jesus does on them, it's the only time this Greek word is used in the New Testament and it's reference to the Old Testament understanding when God breathed into man new life. It's the understanding from the prophet Ezekiel when God tells him to speak to the valley of dry bones and the wind of God comes and breathes into them new life. So when Jesus is breathing on them, we want this kind of breathing. It's referring to life, from death to life, from fear to faith, from selfishness to this incredible selflessness. This message of hope to be shared and sent to all. I've given this illustration before in past and many pastors have before as well, but it just takes on a deeper sense of meaning for me today. And imagine if there was a disease And if someone had developed a vaccine and a cure for the disease, you'd want everyone to know about it. And so it is that when that vaccine for coronavirus is developed, we're going to tell everyone about it. We want everyone to be healed. We want this world to flourish again. We want everyone to be made well. And my friends, the message of Easter is the vaccine against sin, suffering, and death. That is why I so want you to listen to this message. This is why as Christians, we share this message with winsomeness, with truth, and with great love. In wrapping this up for this Easter, may you be filled with joy and may you hear Jesus say to you, Peace be with you. At the end of the gospel of Matthew, Jesus, right after commission, the great commission says, lo, I am with you always till the end of the age. Peace be with you because I am with you. This morning when I was reading through the Psalms, came through Psalm 46, where a verse says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God who fights, the God of victory, the God who sent his son into this world, who died and rose again to defeat suffering, sin, and death is with you. Jesus died and rose again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Pray with me. Father, we come before you today on Easter. This is certainly a very unique and peculiar one, but it doesn't change the power of the message and reality. In fact, I pray that the power and the reality would strike home to our hearts even more. That Jesus, you came, you came, sought us out and you have come to bring us deep peace because you are the risen Lord. And so we celebrate and we will continue to celebrate and find our joy as Easter people, even living in a good Friday world. We thank you that the fullness of Easter will come when all things will be restored. Thank you for that promise. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar Thank you so much for joining us for our Easter service today. May God's peace, may his great joy be yours today and in the days to come because Jesus is the risen King. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you and happy Easter.